10. Five, four, three, two. And welcome. This is Mary Ellen McGonigal with your weekly MEM Edge show brought to you each and every Friday afternoon. And this is the show where we put you in front of where the action is in the broader markets. And it certainly has been quite an active week for sure. So we have lots to cover. Let's take a look at the agenda here. First and foremost, we are, as usual, going to take a look at the current markets. You need to have a really good understanding of where the markets are currently and where they may be headed. Uh, this entire show, the purpose is to help you prepare for not only next week, uh, but beyond to get a real game plan in place so that you can either take advantage of the markets or make sure that you retain uh, your profits if you are shorter term in your trading. So let's carry on. We're also going to take a look at some of these shelter at home stocks that are really holding in remarkably well. There are sound reasons for that. It's not just uh, the uptick in coronavirus cases. So we'll get into that. Also, Wall Street analysts and their impact on stocks. Surprisingly, it's been uh, certainly more recent. I'm noticing that Wall Street uh, upgrades, downgrades are really impacting the underlying stocks. So we'll get into that, look at some of the stocks that were impacted here recently, certainly over the last week. Also, breakout stocks in a tough market environment. Uh, I have a number of stocks that are either have broken out today or this week, or they are poised to do so. So we're going to get into that. And then uh, lastly, making the case for discount retailers. There are several stocks in that area that are really looking um, also quite attractive, but we're going to review precisely why and share with you specific stocks that look uh, really quite interesting, certainly given the market environment. Uh, let's take a look. I'd like to share with you some of the backdrop for the market movement this week, and that's going to take the form of uh, headline news. Of course, dramatic increases in COVID-19 cases in these hot spot states that opened early, as well as elsewhere. It's not just those early openers. So really huge, dramatic pickup in the number of cases. And of course, that is going to uh, halt the, uh, we have seen several states, Texas in particular, that has halted their reopening process, which in turn, of course, is going to reduce the optimism surrounding the economic recovery. Uh, IMF did come out earlier this week, and they uh, in increased, unfortunately, the global output contraction. It originally in April, they were forecasting a 3% contraction in uh, global growth. But earlier this week, they did up that forecast, unfortunately, 4.9%. So very significant uptick there. Also, more uh, government stimulus talks were earlier this week. And then also there was talk of a vaccine as early as the beginning of 2021. So we did get a lot in the way of conflicting headlines this week that really added to the volatility. Also, uh, the technology sector was really down only slightly for the week. You're going to see the significance of that relative to its peers. And I use the word defensive because these technology stocks are needed in this uh, quarantine lockdown period. So they are, uh, in my work, viewed certainly as uh, defensive, as essential to keeping things moving. Weekly uh, unemployment claims, they did come out. This is uh, tomorrow, of course, they're not reporting. But weekly unemployment claims did report today. There was a very slight uptick but the general prognosis is that the worst is behind us in regard to those unemployment claims. So let's go ahead and carry on, take a look at the broader markets. We're looking here at a daily price chart of the S&P 500. Now the S&P, you can see I talked about that volatility this week. Uh, each bar here represents one day. So you can see that we started the week out in rather bullish fashion. 
uh, breaking back above this shorter term 10 day simple moving average. And then of course, as the dire news started to spread as far as virus cases, we did see a significant impact obviously from that. So taking a look at the daily chart, um, my current concern going into this week and even midweek was whether the markets would continue to find support at this blue 200 day simple moving average. And the relevance here is that this is uh, very much viewed and really closely looked at by these larger institutions. They're gonna be paying attention a break below this key support is going to be certainly at the very least a yellow flag. And we can see we did in fact close just dipping below that 200 day simple moving average. And the next possible area of support is this upward trending 50 day simple moving average, which is 1% away. So uh, we again closed below, but take a look. We did get pretty good volume. I'm not quite sure if this is encountering and showing the entire uh, day as far as the updatedness, but it is less than that prior week. Big sell-off here on those virus increased cases back a uh, little over a week ago. So that is uh, could potentially be good news, but uh, I have more work to do. And those of you that subscribe to my MEM Edge report will be fully uh, informed. And of course, I'm sharing today with you uh, as much as can be given that the market's just closed. So let's go ahead and carry on because I do also want to share with you as usual, we are going to drill down further, uh, but I wanted to take a quick look here. I'm going to put the stochastics up because I want to talk about some of these momentum indicators that are also quite relevant when looking at the broader markets. So up on the top here, we have relative strength uh, indicator, RSI, and ideally you want this RSI in a bullish phase to be trending above this net neutral dashed 50 line and also uh, trending upward. So we can see that break earlier this month did uh, push that RSI just a bit below that net neutral, but this week's action, it's a bit more decisive as far as indicating that the near term momentum is uh, negative. It's now below that 50. Let's go ahead down to the stochastics and we can see that this is another momentum indicator. I tend to use this for the broader market indices because it is a bit uh, faster moving, a little more telling. Uh, so we can see that the stochastics, also that 50 net neutral is going to be really relevant here. And it did break back below that 50 into negative territory. So this is a really near term outlook for the broader markets. It is not looking over uh, constructive. So this is super near term. You can always go to your longer term charts. For those of you that are investors as opposed to traders, uh, let's take a quick peek here. I've marked up a uh, weekly chart. Let's see if I can uncover that for us. And here it is. So what we're looking at here are those very same indicators, but when you are looking at a longer term chart, whether it is for a stock and index, your prognosis, your ability to form an opinion going forward is going to be longer term. So we can see on the weekly, the stochastics, uh, the RSI did close the week up above this net neutral. And then also on the stochastics, actually we have the MACD. I apologize. I did use the MACD on the weekly because they are so fast that it would not be uh, viable. It really would be very whippy on the weekly. So the slower moving MACD works quite a bit better. And we can see the MACD did close the week positive. So kind of a medium longer term, we're still in good standing. You're gonna to wanna to do the same with your individual stocks. Uh, take a look if you, again, uh, are longer term in your outlook, that uh, weekly chart can be really quite telling. And let's go ahead and drill down even further. Of course, we want to see what is going on, as I like to say, 
pull the curtain back and really unveil where the relative strength is in the broader markets. And the purpose here is twofold. Uh, we want to see those areas that are holding up despite the downward pressures within the broader markets so that when those market pressures lift, those areas that again are outperforming, holding in well, they're gonna be your by and large leadership areas once those market pressures lift. And then also there are areas that are holding up well uh, for very sound reasons. And uh, we can get into that as we drill down. So I've put the 11 sectors here in this candle glance two month daily chart view, gone ahead and added that RSI indicator, that relative uh, strength indicator, and then sorted it descending. Upper quartile here is going to be your stronger sectors. And we can see up here in the forefront technology. And that particular sector was down only 0.4%, less than a half of a percent relative to the S&P that was down almost 3%. So really superior action here in technology. Again, I talked about the need for technology to keep uh, individuals and businesses running, people connected and so forth. So that is certainly one of the strongest areas. From here, materials are showing up. We did see an uptick in gold stocks. For those of you gold bugs out there, if we have time, I have two stocks in particular that look very attractive. And then consumer discretionary. And this is going to be a really uh, area of the market that is a bit, um, as far as the haves and the have nots and the areas doing well here, of course, are those that have really had uh, being superior in their ability to with online retail. And of course, there are essential as well as non-essential areas that are seeing a real pickup in demand during this lockdown. So then uh, as we move on, energy got walloped this week, worst performer down over 6%. And I did want to point out for those of you that follow the show each week, you'll know that Communication Services XLC normally is up there in the forefront. This is your internet related stocks. Again, all about keeping people connected, entertained. It got hit today down 4.4% and it had everything to do with Facebook. Facebook got hit. For those of you that follow that stock closely, it was down almost 9% as advertisers are boycotting the platform. So very negative impact there. So th that is your view of the underlying sectors. Let's move on here and carry this even further because in addition to the NASDAQ I, uh, and the S&P, we also have the small cap index here, biotechnology stocks, very relevant, semiconductor and software stocks. I have the ETFs, SOXX and IGV for software. Uh, these are all super growth areas of the market that are holding in and really supporting the markets at this point in time. So again, RSI descending, and we can go ahead and update this view. This is that look at gold stocks that I talked about, a nice breakout here. And really this group has held in remarkably well. And we can see this nice bullish uptrending here on both the RSI and the MACD. From here, we can see that these software stocks and they are really uh, holding in quite well. Software stocks were one of the only sub industry groups that actually closed the week up in line with technology. So up about 0.3%. We can see the RSI and the MACD in very bullish standing here. So we're going to be covering some of the names in that area, all about cloud computing and the ability for people to stay connected. Uh, biotechnology stocks, another area that has been uh, waffling a bit for those of you that follow my work and this show, we were all about capturing this pullback, this uh, downtrend reversal here. And biotech stocks did hold in really quite well, relatively down 2%. RSI still up 
in good standing, as is the MACD. We're going to cover a couple of names in there that you uh, certainly would want to be aware of. And let's go ahead and take a very quick break. When we get back, I am going to drill down further. We're going to talk about those breakout stocks, analyst recommendations, and sheltered home stocks as well. We'll be right back. During every bull market, there are a select set of stocks that far outpace their peers. They trade much higher and much faster than the rest of the markets. The reason? These select stocks have a set of characteristics that history has proven are common among big winning stocks. My easy to follow course will teach you the skills of a lifetime so you can learn how to uncover and then successfully trade these fast moving stocks. Take my five part course now by going to meminvestmentresearch.com for this limited time offer. And we are back. I am going to begin this segment by talking about some of these shelter at home, those stocks that are benefiting and seeing uh, actual growth, not only because of this lockdown period, but just also because of general increase in demand of their products. And this first one is Boston Beer. The ticker symbol is S-A-M. And there has been talk as far as uh, an increase in, certainly with bars and restaurants closed, we are seeing uh, a pickup in the retail sales of alcohol. And Boston Beer is uh, they have in addition to their beer a hard seltzer product that is seeing really big demand and Barron's wrote an article yesterday that helped boost the stock it was up almost six percent today in the face of a very uh, severe sell-off in the broader market so let's take a look the stock did break out of this nice base here at the end of april had a very nice advance and this is very typical of what you'll see in these faster moving stocks they're not going to endlessly go higher they will have a period of consolidation whether it takes shape in the form of a pullback in this case it was a pullback we are now forming the right side of this base the stock would be uh, breaking out of that base at 580 but take a look at the volume volume on today's action, really constructive. And we can see that I'm um, using a little bit different chart here, but this is the PPO. And uh, we can see that the oscillator, this black line is poised to go up through the red, very bullish, taking us back to this April. We can see the significance there. And then also the RSI is trending positively as well. So let's go ahead and take a look at some of these other stocks that are Again, seeing an increase in demand for their products. I'm going to uh, go ahead back to a more standard view and we can take a quick look here at a software stock. BOX is the ticker symbol and it's a bit smaller, a $3 billion company, but they're all about uh, cloud and uh, cloud content, the ability for people to stay connected using any device and be located anywhere. So a nice uptick there. I apologize because I do want to add that 21 day, that extra layer. Here we are. So we can see that the stock did have a significant breakout earlier in the week. And this is indicative of what we did see in a number of software stocks. They had an early week rally, but it pulled back very orderly BOX to this upward trending 10 day simple moving average. Again, the fact that it was up today in a down market environment is uh, showing superior relative outperformance. We have a positive RSI and a MACD and analysts are continuing to raise estimates here. Another software stock that is seeing a big demand, there are also, uh, this is DocuSign. The company is also really expanding their product line. For many years, they were known primarily for the ability for individuals to sign contracts. This is helping out certainly in real estate and other transactions to do so remotely. So that is seeing a big demand, but they are doing a lot in the way of utilizing artificial intelligence to help in other areas of transactions. And the growth prospects are really quite big. We can see the stock is in a very confirmed uptrend, certainly overbought up here, this RSI by any standard, but 
by and large, uh, buy on the pullback has been working with DocuSign. Another uh, stock, this is all about digital advertising, data-driven. Uh, let's see if we can get that ticker symbol. TTD is the ticker symbol. The stock is Trade Desk Inc. And another one, again, it is certainly uh, has had a significant advance already, but nice superior uptrend. We can see it's finding support at that shorter term, upward trending 10 day simple moving average. Uh, one last one in this space, and this is a company that I wrote about on stockcharts.com yesterday. Don't ignore this chart. This is Chegg Inc, C-H-G-G, and they are an online uh, educational platform. And we can see that the stock, this is this huge gap up here on earnings. The stock did have an advance subsequent to that, but a nice orderly pullback, the stock picked up into new highs. We talked about that early week move in the software names and pulled back to this upward trending 10 day simple moving average. I would say for sure, take a look at that article because I talk about longer term. I'm using a weekly chart uh, in that uh, particular piece. And moving on to leisure uh, areas. And this is a stock that I did cover a couple of weeks ago. It's SCP Pool Corp. Uh, this is all about people with families and not just with families, but uh, staying at home and keeping yourself uh, entertained. And so this company is seeing a big pickup in demand for their higher end uh, people are actually putting pools into uh, their backyard. So we can see that the stock has already had a significant advance, but the ability to take advantage, if you will, of these pullbacks can really work out well. We can see going back here, the stock had significant advance at the end of April, pulled back to this upward trending 21 day simple moving average and had another leg up. Again, this is what I like to call a reset button, if you will. So we are pulling back, finding support for the most part, but what you want to also pay attention to is this MAC down here. This is your momentum indicator, not alarming by any means, just telling you that very near term, the stock is still in a consolidation phase. I would look for that black line to cross up through the red and a nice upward trend on that RSI would have me more convinced that that pullback period was uh, behind you. Let's take a look at another outdoor related stock, Trex TR. EX. These guys are all about decks, and that's another area that is seeing big growth. People are enhancing their homes uh, with an eye toward remaining in them and enjoying that time. So uh, Trex is another stock that was very fast out of the gate, but let's take a look because it did it did have, an, again, another very orderly type of a pullback, not quite to that 50-day simple moving average, but your moving averages are generally upward trending. The stock is now forming the right side of a base. Your RSI is positive, and then this is that MACD crossover signal that I talked about. So during consolidation phase, the MACD will trend downward, but take a look, that black line up through the red indicating that that downtrend is uh, very likely reversing. Uh, we have time for a couple more names here in this uh, shelter at home environment where these stocks are uh, exhibiting superior strength, but really you may note a trend here because most of those really big relative outperformers are up and out. And that's going to be similar to uh, DocuSign and some of the other names that I've been sharing with you. But now we're getting more into those names that are pulling back. Again, you can take advantage of that downtrend reversal. This is Sprouts Farmer Market, FSFM. They are primarily a West Coast uh, market, a lot in the way of organic foods. So let's examine this chart. We can see the stock powered to new highs. This was in an environment where other uh, grocery stores were also outperforming, but not to the extent of uh, sprouts. And we can see that the stock has pulled back. Now it did undercut that 50 day and that's fine. A lot of these fast moving stocks, they will very slightly undercut, shake out your weaker holders and then form the right side of a base. Very bullish action here with the break back above these shorter term simple moving averages, RSI up above that 50 and 
trending upward. And take a look at this MACD. It is entering, uh, coming out of that oversold uh, negative position. It's not quite positive yet, but that black line up through the red uh, would be very constructive, nice volume uptick as the stock advances. So I am going to leave it at that for those shelter at home because I would be remiss to not share some of the other areas I talked about. And that was breakout stocks that are, again, defying broader market action. Uh, this is Workday. Now, we are not quite in a breakout quite yet, but the stock is poised. This is another cloud computing stock that is HR related. And what I did want to point out to you, it would be uh, bullish if we were to see a breakout of this base. So again, another stock, a nice advance, and it's consolidating. So a nice break up above 190 on volume would be quite constructive for the prospects for this stock. Another uh, potential breakout stock is in, oh, let's just see another tech Technology name, T-E-R, is the ticker symbol, Teradyne, and uh, this particular stock is actually did break out this week. I'm going to go ahead and annotate it so you can capture that, and we can see it's a bit of a longer term base breakout, and for those of you uh, not familiar with that concept, the longer the base uh, breakout is coming out of, the longer you're historically, the longer you're advance out of that base. So we did break out of this very significant base here, and it is marking time, certainly in line with the broader markets. So those were a couple of highlight names that uh, you can certainly keep on your watch list for more potential upside. One other area that I did want to cover are, I talked about analyst and their upgrades and downgrades. And so let's take a look because really it's been uh, eye-opening to me to see the response and whether it's because uh, actual institutions and investors are looking for guidance during this period. But Amazon actually, uh, their price target was continues to be upped. The stock did find support at this upward trending 10 day simple moving average. So very constructive action, certainly given what we saw in the broader markets, the price target is now 3,333 Deutsche Bank and the stock's trading at about 2,700. So, uh, but it did hold in quite well. Another stock that had a price target uptick this week was also Etsy, one of the few stocks that was up today on that price target, 112, the stock's trading at about 102, so a nice potential 10% advance from here. Uh, but really, again, I'm highlighting this concept that these stocks that do get upgrades, price targets, uh, this is Seattle Genetics, a very uh, top leading stock in biotechnology. Price target's been up to 200. The stock's trading at about 165. Another stock poised to break out of this nice base. So the point here is for those of you that do are more active in your trading, I would say uh, take a look at those upgrades and downgrades and it's really going to point you toward potential candidates. And one last area I promised we'd go ahead and take a look at is some of these discount retailers, certainly given the economic outlook and higher unemployment. These stocks, uh, several select names, are seeing a lot in the way of increased demand for their products and subsequently the stock prices are responding and this is big lots big another again big winner out of the gate this was a gap up on earnings the stock advanced take a look it had a very nice orderly pullback here and today's gap up was on news management talked about sales improving in the mid 20 percent for their most recent quarter that's still only a month in. So we can see this nice gap up on volume breaking out of a base. Very bullish. I'm going to leave it at that. For those of you not familiar, take a look at my MEM Edge report. Have a great weekend. Hey, Grayson Rose here with Stock Charts. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, consider giving it a like down below. Maybe leave us a comment. And if you're new to the channel, you can subscribe at the link up above. We're going to bring you daily content from an incredible collection of technical analysts and financial experts.